Welcome back, everyone, to another Zero K Exhibition match. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have one last match for today. It's going to be Dan Warrior versus Luke. Okay, I guess if it's supposed to be Polish, it'd be Luke Kunch, but that doesn't sound right. Lou on Sparkles Reef. Both players playing with shipyards, and both players are starting. Oh, you know, Lou's starting out with more of a Instructed build, and Dan is starting out with hunters with a cool looking model. Yeah, cool looking hunter model. I think it's cool anyway. Uh huh. Oh, okay, Point, chat pointing out that Dan Warrior is also another up and comer. Although, Lou, I think, is also fairly new. So, both players are reasonably new players that have been practicing, apparently. Yeah, I just like to see where Steve is at various skill levels as we go. Lou playing this much more defensively. Might run into a few problems. Hunter coming in here. It's getting out of micro. And Lou with a slight advantage if they go and engage quickly. Yeah, well, I mean, it's been a split up here. Oh, never mind. Another hunter coming in and nothing to defend it. The Mariner won't die before the defensive hunters come in. But it may be enough. At least it's quite a threat. Lou's commander, however, have taken heavy damage. But the Corsair putting a stop to all that. Still, the more hunters coming in here regularly from Dan Warrior. Loose Commander taking a lot of damage. The Mariner will go down for this second wave. And that pretty much sets it. So, Loose Commander taking a lot of damage. Their Dan Warrior is managing to expand at the same time. Though, honestly, a bit slower. Oh, Loose to your player? Alright, well, still not nothing. I mean... I don't know, you practice and you get better. We'll see how this goes anyway. This was not a request, by the way. This match was not requested, I just found it. Because that's how I normally do things. I do enjoy having requests, and sometimes I just don't have enough requests for a whole whole stream. So I get other matches to pull in and add more stuff to the stream. And this is one of those matches. Anyhow, Lou with... Bit more robust defenses being set up. Corsair to the south, a couple urchins to the north. That will keep them safe. But there, there's no way hunters can get through that. None unless it was, you know, ten hunters or something like that. It would be kind of ridiculous. There are more efficient ways of dealing with those defenses than a bunch of hunters. Loot at the same time, though, is asserting a much larger territory. Look here, it's like a quarter, well, not even a quarter map, but just this corner. For Lou, Dan Warrior, on the other hand, asserting... Sorry, sorry Dan's asserting lift territory. Dan Warrior asserting basically all of this. So it's about, honestly, twice as much territory by area. And by metal. Lou is starting to push about the same amount, but again, it's just that level of aggression isn't quite there. So Dan Warrior will have to be careful. They are spreading themselves out a fair bit. They could be spreading themselves out too thin. If this Corsair, or if this Corsair were to attack either side here, it would have no resistance. The Hunters would be torn apart in seconds. And everything behind that, you know, there's one Urchin, another Urchin on the main base. Yeah, that wouldn't, that wouldn't present a huge threat. Oh, and Lou switching over to Mistral Seawolf. Well, pretty much Corsair, oh... Yeah, of course, Aaron the Mistral Hunter is what Dan's going for. Dan kind of has the type counter here. Hunters basically deal with sea wolves, so with that, there's not much that can be done. Let's see what happens to the hunter coming through, and might be okay. Sorry, Mistral coming through might be okay. Mistral should be fine. It's more the sea wolves aren't going to be able to do so well against the hunters. Or, not hunters, these are cutters, but against the hunters that are not these units. The hunters that are under construction right here. Because these are hunters. And the cutters are just here to see. Actually, no, the cutters. Oh, cutters need to come in here. Why aren't cutters here? Bring them here. They're needed. Ah, it's too late. 
Oh, it's not too late! Okay, this Corsair is basically dead. It's It cannot engage anything, but... Hey, the Cutters did their job. Cutters over to the north, going over to the Scout. Kind of leaving Dan a little open over to the north side of the map, but also knowing where Lou is. Super important. Again, I always, I always stress the importance of scouting. Despite not always doing it myself, because it is a very difficult thing to remember to do. Which is why I always remind people so that I'm always surrounding myself. And nice little harassment coming in here. I mean, the urchins could be a problem. Oh, no, not really. Nope. Urchins are fine. Same time, though, Mistrels along the south side of the map from Lou are going to be opening things up in a way that Dan does not have a response for. And I think Lou is honestly in a better position here. Like, Dan's position, they're going to be torn apart as soon as these subs come in. Lou's position, on the other hand, there's nothing really defending. The Mistral's about to go down. There are no defenses other than the Urchins in the back. Now, granted, there is this large army coming from behind. But still, losing... Losing a Mariner is a large loss, especially at the edge of your territory like that. And while also losing these harassing forces, taking out only a metal extractor and an urchin, that was not worth it. And Dan Warrior is also actually having a bit of a hard time defending this. Getting rid of some units, but ultimately they lost their Mistral. They haven't managed to take out any... Well, they managed to take out one Corsair, and that's it. The second Corsair... Ooh, okay, it's playing really risky. Luchin Chance, I think, is hoping Friendly Fire is gonna... Ah, it does! Their hope was not in vain. Friendly Fire ends up finishing off that Mariner. But I guess Lou, Lou figures, well, they've done enough damage here. Same time, countering over to the north. Pushing in hard. Might not be able to get rid of that Urchin with one Seawolf. That, that's, that Seawolf is kind of committing suicide. Oh, but it doesn't care. Ooh, is the slow gonna save? The slow does save it. Oh, wow. Absolutely saved the day with the slow. Gets rid of the urchin with the mistrels afterwards, just in case anything new comes in. But wow, that was a surprise. Same time counterattacks on the mistral from Dan, but I don't think it's gonna do all that much to Lou. As Lou is coming to the center, as they again, they've opened it up. They got rid of that one urchin. That was very well done. And now it's just... Okay, the Hunter's going to be a bit of a problem. The Corsair's come in. Start taking it out. The Seawolf is really what this comes down to. And... Luking Chan... Luking Chan takes it. And that is pretty strong there. And Siren... Siren could be a problem. It, it is tanky. The Corsairs are going to be able to deal a lot of damage. But I don't know if three Corsairs is enough. No, three Corsairs is enough. There, however, are Seawolves in the back that are providing extra support, so three courses is not the fight. And Dan taking some advantage to take out Lou's commander over to the northwest. And that should open things up pretty significantly. At least in theory it would, but Dan Dan's commander up here as well. Nothing, well, only the one seal to defend it, but no, it's down. So Dan's commander looks threatened as well. It does have some land to go on to. Seawolf's trying to block its path, trying to slow it down, and is it going to get out of the water in time? It looks like it might. Oh yeah, getting on the land takes out the Seawolves as they surface and die. And Dan still has a front base here. And all this time though, Lou... Oh, Lou actually losing the center. Losing those curses to the center was a big deal, though four sirens coming in around the back. Trying to open things up again. A little risky. There is a strong center force from Dan that will be going forward, possibly. I actually might go back to defend. I think Lou is kind of betting on it's going back to defend because there, there's nothing in Lou's base that's going to stop this. And no, Dan going straight for a trade. They're not even trying to stop these sirens directly. I think they have confidence in their production abilities in their main base to stop the sirens without having to retreat. I don't know if I agree with that assessment. I mean, the sirens over to the south are cracking things wide open. Lou's just not really being as aggressive as they could be, considering the units they have. 
man, those sirens are doing an amazing job. I mean, the seawolves basically have no chance. Urchin goes down as well. There's the Mistrals is about the only real hope here. Not doing a bad job, but the sirens... Oh, this is tricky. See, the thing is the sirens are expensive. So then we leave them behind like 200 metal a pop. 240 metal a pop. So it's a question of can they... It kind of is a question of can they win. Like, if the caretakers go down, this is a big deal. But if they don't go down, then this is all for nothing. And there are a lot of caretakers and a lot of mistrals. Two caretakers are down, though. Nurture remains. That opens things up for a possible counterattack. At the same time, the center is being smashed as well. So Lou does have a second wave coming in as the sirens do go down. Two of the caretakers are down, but Dan wasn't really at production capacity. So Lou hasn't actually damaged much. Same time, Lou actually not building units themselves. But they might be able to open this up. Sea Wolves coming in, trying to deal a little extra damage. But it looks like Dan has managed to defend their base well enough. At least for now. It's proving tricky, though. Sea Wolves got to be careful. Cannot engage the Sirens. And the Sirens got to be careful about engaging the Mistrals, but Sea Wolves. Sea Wolves can engage the Mistrals. Still, that was a huge blow, and the reclaim is already going. Dan taking a massive economic advantage as a result. Don't have to worry too much about excess either. They have storage. They have the commander. They get in the caretakers back up quickly enough. And ultimately, those sirens ended up being a donation to Dan, which they're taking advantage of to wipe out Lou's southeast base. Completely destroy their ability to use that for overdrive, reclaim, anything. Metal, obviously. So despite that center push... Lou honestly hasn't really managed to do much, and now Dan, on the snapback, thanks to all that reclaim, is basically wiping out everything here. Just all they need is a few seawolves to take out these energy pylons, and then they'd be solid. But even without that, it's just, you no know, two sirens coming in here, and dealing with those. Mariner's coming in to try to help. What are they trying to help with? I guess, you know, reclaim is one thing for sure. At any rate, Dan turning all that into a fusion reactor to get a little bit extra as far as their own production, as far as their own overdrive goes. Same time there is... Oh, yeah, there is the Envoy here, too. One Envoy versus three. It doesn't quite work out. The Envoy is from Lou, able to win the fight. Although it's unclear how well that's going to pan out. Ultimately, it looks like it will pan out pretty well, actually. And that being said, the missiles coming in. Do they have the range? They do, but it's not enough. Still, more importantly, big picture here. Lou has basically no ex economy left. The missiles are taking out what's left of their metal extractors. Now, there is some defense against it. They've There's been so much donation into Dan's base that Dan pretty much doesn't have to worry about economy for the rest of the game. Or very likely for the rest of the game. Depending on how quickly they act. You have the sirens here, you have an envoy for extra artillery, sirens to block against sea wolves, mistral to help deal with sirens and other longer range units. Dan with a massive economic advantage here. More a question of is Dan gonna mess up their unit positioning and give Lou an opening? And that might be the case. I mean, I'm a little concerned this just isn't enough units going forward. Especially as these mar these mariners are going down again in the center of the map, opening things up. Now, Siren is up. And loss in the mariners is tragic. But at the same time, there wasn't a lot left to reclaim. I mean, most of the reclaim now is just the corpses of the dead mariners. So ultimately, that was a little late. At the same time, over to the north side of the map, Dan just... You know, chipping away, taking a few pot shots here and there. I think once this forward assault force is gone, if it gets... I mean, okay, I, unless Lou manages to turn this into a victory, but the siren alone is making me doubtful. Yeah, it's kind of just holding on to some territory here, holding on to a presence in Lou's base until Dan's able to, well, move in with the siren over the west, take out the assault force in their main base, 
And then if they take out the assault force on the main base, they're just going to push forward. That's going to be game. Like, Lou has to win it off this. And I don't see that happening. The siren alone, there's, there it is. The siren taking out the sea wolves. The sea wolves trying their best. I mean, the slow is helping. But having destroyed so many sea wolves, there just isn't really much of an army left to take out the rest of the base, the rest of the economy, anything. And the envoys have no real support. And another mariner does go down. But more and more are being built. Again, Dan just has the economic advantage. They can afford to lose a few mariners here and there. Especially having just taken care of all the sea wolves. That's what they needed. That was everything up. The envoys have no real defenses. Hunters being built up to deal with the hunters and sea wolves combined. It built up a deal with the envoys. And at the same time, just slow contain around here. Do you see Lee Chan's looking to rebuild over in the south side of the map or southeast side of the map, and it's just not panning out. Dan already taking the eastern metal extractors. Lou not really able to take much back from that, and it looks looks pretty strongly like Dan pretty much has this. The envoys have been caught. Hunters have them. Sirens don't quite have them. Siren is going to go down. But that's it. Lou sees there's no way they can push back from this. They just, they've just fallen far too far behind. And that is game. Strong early from Lou, but honestly a lot of risky plays. Like the four sirens here had to destroy a factory or at least wipe out all the caretakers to have a chance. And they did not. And ultimately, Dan was just really on point with a reclaim. Lou, on the other hand, had so much reclaim in their base that they never took. And I think if Lou had taken that reclaim, they would have had a chance to be even. Although I've got to say, considering the massive difference in metal income overall, that Lou actually did an impressive job really fighting from behind. Like, they... If you look, attrition-wise, they were winning. Somehow. Wait, how does this match up? So the attrition panel is not matching with this. The value killed Lou is tied or a little ahead, but the attrition panel says that they were 10,000 behind. I mean, that's because of the game end. That, I think that screws it up a bit. Didn't think it did, but it might have. Anyhow, yeah, like, Lou had a larger army value and was a bit more efficient, despite having a massive deficit in metal income for the longest time. Yeah. So, um, thanks for watching. It sounds like chat actually enjoyed that. It was like... I mean, I was just finding... I found this one just about the replay list. My, my rule, essentially, is... To go off of reasonably high rankings, as I mentioned last, or two weeks ago, I don't really want to go above, or bo go below giant rank, but maybe sub-giant in some cases. But yeah, it's the... But when I... I just look for games that are more than about 10 minutes long. They're usually good games. If they're between relatively even players and they're more than 10 minutes long, then they're going to be a back and forth. And... The requests I got were also really good requests. Like, the first two matches were requests. And they were really good requests. So thank you for those. Anyhow, thank you for watching. And sounds like you enjoyed that. But for those on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that. And until next time, have a good night, everyone.